Happy, happy Wednesday to all my Facebook friends. I hope all of you are having a great day. I'm going to do a little sharing. So hold tight real quick. And then we are going to make a Pampered Chef classic. I have already pinned the recipe in the um, description of this video so you guys can um, if you want when this is over you can go and print out the recipe or follow it yourself um, but it is already pinned let me just finish sharing to all of my parties going on so hang on one second almost done almost done hang tight hang tight um, Okay, I think I got them all. It's hard because the way this does it for the sharing doesn't do it in order. But I think I got it all. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday to all my Facebook friends. We are having a Pampered Chef Classic for dinner tonight. And so I thought I would bring you live. I have um, some stuff out, some stuff I'm just cooking the way I would if I weren't Facebook Live um, to show you how easy it really can be to get dinner on the table. Um, we're making the chicken enchilada ring. My kids love this, love this, love this. And they were so excited when they unloaded the groceries yesterday, they figured out we were having this because they saw the crescent rolls. And I don't ever buy crescent rolls unless we are having chicken enchilada rings. So they knew it was coming up sometime this week. Hey guys, hey Debbie, hey Mary. Hey Susan, hey Angela, hey Amy, hey Lori. Um, anyway, feel free to share this video. Some of your friends may want this is a great idea for dinner. Um, and give me a heart if, um, the little heart emoji, if you love this recipe or have ever had it before. This is one of my kids' favorites. Now, I'm actually going to separate part of the mix once we make it because Chris and I will not eat the crescent roll part. We're going to have the mixture and um, I have some cheddar cheese folio wraps is what they're called. Um, and we turn those into kind of like a tostado and we put the filling on top of it to keep it keto for us. So I only make one meal. I just let the kids eat it with the crescent rolls and we eat it a little bit different. Hey Sarah. Yes, Susan, you need to try this. Um, if you're just hopping on, um, feel free to share this video. We are going to make a Pampered Chef Classic tonight for dinner and I thought I would bring you in um, to watch how easy it is to make. The only thing I did before I went live, I did go ahead and cook, oh, you can see how hot it is. I did go ahead and cook my chicken. So I should have taken the lid off before now because it's really, really hot. This was about two and a half pounds of chicken tenders and I seasoned it with Southwestern seasoning and chili lime rub. Um, and I did it in the four quart rock crock which is our Dutch oven rock crock in the microwave. I did eight minutes, then I moved the chicken around a little and did an additional eight minutes. And that's all I did. I did not add any liquid, and I don't know if y'all will be able to see. And yes, this rock crock is hot, um, but it is not burning my hands because my kids make fun of me and say that I have no feeling in my hands. That's a whole nother story for another day. Um, anyway, I didn't add any liquid. I just put the chicken tenders in there, boneless, skinless chicken tenders. You could do this with chicken breast if you wanted. Um, hey, Carrie Hendricks. Um, I just did the boneless, skinless chicken breast, seasoned them, put the lid on, put it in my microwave for eight minutes. When it went off, I moved the chicken around a little just since it was overlapping and did another eight minutes until it was done. Um, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna transfer it to the stainless. This is the large stainless steel mixing bowl using the chef's tongs. We're gonna transfer it because this is where I'm going to mix up all of my ingredients for the filling to the enchilada ring. Um, if I was making, um, like a lot of times I'll make Ritz chicken and use the rock crock and I'll just chop up the chicken right in the rock crock and then turn around and add the rest of the ingredients. But for the enchilada ring, um, we need enough room to really mix 
Y'all, look at all this juice that it created. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's just natural juice from the chicken. Oh, I'm gonna set that out of the way. Um, so I would just dirty the one pot if I were making a dish like that. But in this case, we need to add lots of other stuff to here. Welcome, 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 guys. I'm so glad you're coming in. We are making a Pampered Chef Classic tonight for dinner. I have um, put the recipe in the description, so when I'm done, you can um, go and print it out and see it. All right, so all we have is some boneless, skinless chicken tenders that were seasoned with Southwestern seasoning and chili lime rub. We are going to use a absolute must-have product, which is the salad choppers, to chop this up. You can use these one of two ways. I tend to hold it just kind of like scissors. Some people will hold it like this. Whatever is easiest for you, whatever feels natural, but all I am doing with this cooked chicken is going and making it bite size with the salad choppers. Yes, they're called salad choppers. Um, you can use them on salad. I tend to use it on cooked meat the most because I don't know if y'all can still see that the steam coming off this chicken is very intense. So it would be very difficult to pull this chicken apart with my fingers. I could use um, our shredders, but the salad choppers just tend to chop it up quick, easy, um, and very little effort. If you were doing barbecue chicken, this would be great for chopping the chicken for that. Barbecue pork, it'd be great for that as well. They're dishwasher safe, lifetime warranty, all that good stuff. Love these and they are life changing. I bought my mother-in-law that for Christmas. Caitlin, aren't they amazing? Um, if y'all have the salad choppers, type in number one in the comments and let's see how many people have the salad choppers. Um, uh, there was something else. I just had a complete brain for. Oh, what are y'all having for dinner tonight? Or have you decided, hey, cousin Lisa? Um, this is a recipe that um, I used to make it all the time when we'd have leftovers. We're not really going to have leftovers because my boys will end up eating it all. But um, that's okay. It'll, it'll be fine. All right. So to this, we now need to add um, the rest of our ingredients. We are going to add some sliced olives. Some green chilies is what the recipe calls for, but I'm actually going to use Rotel because it has green chilies in it and it has diced tomatoes. I will also add a diced tomato, but I only had one tomato because I forgot to get them at the store yesterday. Um, so this way I will get a little more tomato from the Rotel and just my one. Let me grab my can opener. And I I will make sure and go back at the end of the video and read y'all's comments in case I miss any of the comments. Um, but share with everybody, if you have the salad choppers, type a one and share what you're having for dinner tonight. It's a must have. Yes, they are a must have, Caitlin. You haven't decided. Okay, well maybe you should go get stuff to make chicken enchilada ring because um, it is the bomb. So we're gonna use a smooth edge can opener to open up our rotel, or if you're following the recipe exactly, you would do green chilies. You don't drain the green chilies, so I am not going to drain my rotel. So we're just gonna dump that in there. We are also going to add some sliced olives. I do not ever buy sliced or chopped olives. I always buy whole olives because it is cheaper and then I slice them myself so we're going to do that in just a second if I can find my kids have been helping unload the dishwasher so some of my stuff is not in its usual place um, I'm going to use the can strainer just to drain out the liquid so hold tight has everyone had a great Wednesday, I almost said Tuesday and it's not Tuesday. Have y'all had a great Wednesday? And it's April Fools. Um, type in the comments some of the April Fools that happened to y'all. My 12 year old, I think got my husband the best. John Allen texted him, he was up in his room. This is the quick slice by the way, look how easy it is to slice all. He was up in his room this morning and Chris was working, his office is downstairs. 
Hey, Tina. Hey, Amy. Um, and he texted Chris and he said, oh my gosh, Dad, oh my gosh, I just accidentally spent a thousand dollars. I don't even know what little account, like maybe some gaming account or something. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And Chris figured it out because all of our different online payment things notify him immediately when there's um, a purchase and he had not gotten any notification. So he didn't fool Chris, but I thought that was a pretty fun April Fool's. Um, then Mackenzie sent one. She sent a text to both me and Chris that I didn't think was so fun, but I knew it was April Fool's right away. But it was a picture that was a big NCAA sign and it said, it's official the NCAA has postponed the 2020-2021 football season. So that wasn't as funny because the reality is that actually could possibly happen and we are praying that that's not the case since Evan is supposed to leave for school soon. Okay, anyway, let me see. What? Are, hey, Amber. Hey, Tina. Another Tina. Hey, Heather. Okay, so we have our green chili and tomato kind of mix. Since we did Rotel, we have our olives, we have our chicken. We are going to use the quick slice on the tomato. And if y'all can't see what I'm doing, swipe the comments out of the way and you should be able to see a little better. Um, with those olives, I just did a handful at a time, dumped them into the bowl. Um, this tomato is super, super ripe, so it's not going to do the best with the quick slice, but... Since we are cooking this, it'll be okay if I make a little mess out of the tomato. What I'm doing, I've sliced it. I'm going to slice it again. And then I'm going to pick up the stuff and slice one more time. And it basically, ooh, get it in the middle, basically is dicing the tomato for me. So it just diced the tomato. Made my job a little easier. I do not like to dice tomatoes. I am challenged when it comes to dicing tomatoes. So the quick slice is probably my best friend when it comes to dicing tomatoes. All right, let me get my tomato juice off of here. All right, and now we need um, some garlic. Gotta have fresh garlic in everything. Once we get this in the oven, I'm also going to make my homemade guacamole because I have some fresh salsa I made the other day. Hey, Drew Ann. And I have some avocados that are really ripe, so um, I'll keep y'all on and you can watch how easy it is to make homemade guacamole. Using the garlic press, we're gonna add a couple cloves. Pause one minute, let me get a paring knife. I told you I didn't get everything out for this. I'm showing you what it's really like when I'm cooking in my kitchen. A um, Couple cloves of fresh garlic that we're gonna crush into this bowl. I love it because look, there's your garlic peel. I didn't have to touch it. I hope everybody is having a great day. Um, we need to shred eight ounces. Hey, Crystal, I have been praying for your baby constant. I look for updates all the time, so I will continue to pray. Um, I hope she is having a good day. Um, we are gonna use eight ounce block of cheese. Let me grab it. I didn't want to take it out too early because I didn't want it to get too soft and be hard to shred. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Trey. Be sure and tell us what you guys are having for dinner tonight. Okay, so I'm using the microplane coarse grater to shred this cheese. Um, I do not like to buy pre-shredded cheese just because it's got lots of preservatives in it, one of which is cellulose, which is sawdust or wood fiber. Um, so I like to have fresh cheese. So this is an eight ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese. You could do Colby Jack would also be good. Monterey Jack would be good in this recipe. How much is the grater? Caitlin, I will um, comment after this video is over because I need to look it up. I can't remember right off the top of my head. I know we sell the coarse grater and the fine grater as a set, and it's discounted that way, but they are also sold individually. So I will um, comment and let you know as soon as I am done. I am currently doing a Feeding America fundraiser. I know some of you participated in the um, scoop and spread and the cut and seal 
and I'm still waiting on some of those to come in, so they should be here soon. Okay, this is what you do when you're at home. You eat the last little bit of cheese. When I'm at a party, I can't do that, but when I'm home, I can. And then we're just gonna take our cheese, dump it into the bowl. This is why we use the big bowl, because this mixture is filling this bowl up. Okay, I am gonna mix this up a little bit before we add our seasoning and our mayonnaise. Um, anyway, I'm doing a Feeding America fundraiser, and if you're interested in that, go to my timeline. I posted it this morning, or if you're in my VIP group, I also posted it there. But Pampered Chef has decided to double the donations that they are making um, to Feeding America, so it's up to 30% from that fundraiser. Anything that is ordered off of that, and I'm running it the whole month, but when you order your order processes and ships direct to you at that time, so you don't have to wait till the end of the month, um, I am also going to donate all of my commission from that to the local Feeding America food bank for me. So, hey Lori Curley. Oh, thank you, Stacy. Hey, Caitlin, the grader is $40. Let me get another clean scraper. All right, so we need half a cup of mayonnaise. So I'm gonna use the um, measure all cup. I'm using the um, one cup measure all cup. We also have a two cup, but since I only need half a cup, I'm using the smaller one. I am using um, traditional avocado mayo instead of regular, unless I don't have enough, and then we're gonna add some Hel um, Hellman's in because I don't know this is almost out I will tell you if you use our scrapers to get stuff out of a jar you don't leave anything in there so if you need to get the last little bit of mayonnaise or peanut butter or ketchup or any of that definitely use our scrapers all right I need a little more so we're just gonna mix with some Hellman's it won't hurt Mayonnaise is relatively keto friendly. I like the avocado one a little bit better. Look, I'm almost out of this mayonnaise too, so we're just cleaning out the refrigerator. There's a little bit left in there, not enough to save. So, let me throw that away. Woo. Okay, so what's great about this is I measured out a half a cup and then you just press it into wherever you need it, scrape off the excess, and you did not waste any. You got your full measurement without having any waste. So I love that. All right, so we are gonna mix. I probably could have done even a little more mayonnaise, but that's okay. We've got plenty of cheese, so that'll be great. All right, and then we do need some Southwestern seasoning. I also am gonna add a little chili lime rub whenever you have a second to. Okay, yes, I will get you the price of that. I believe the quick slice, don't quote me, and Stacy may be able to help me out. I think it's $37, but that may be wrong. I am not um, good with knowing the prices right off the top of my head, but I will make sure and fill you in when this is over. All right, so we're gonna do about two tablespoons of Southwestern seasoning using the little um, measuring spoon set. And what I love is because they fit down in my seasoning jar so we're going to do two tablespoons of that and i had some seasoning on the chicken as well both the chili lime rub and um the southwestern but we're still adding a little more because we've added a lot of ingredients i'm only going to do about a half a tablespoon of the chili lime rub and then we're going to do a little salt I'm not measuring that i never measure my salt i just put it in there and then we're going to mix this really really well now, if you click on the link for this recipe, it does call to put some crushed tortilla chips in here. So literally just get some regular tortilla chips, crush them up or put them in your manual processor and crush them. I'm not going to do that um, just because I'm being lazy if I'm gonna be honest with you. Hey, Nancy Foster. Oh. Yeah, Stacy has the book right with her. That's why she's being such a great help. I really appreciate it, Stacy. All right, so um, I'm just being lazy, not adding the chips. It's not gonna make that big of a deal. The kids are gonna do some cheese dip with chips, so they're still getting chips. 
The other thing it says to do with those chips is to um, press your crescent rolls into it and it just makes it pretty. We're not doing that either because my boys don't care about pretty, they just want to eat. Okay, so now what I am going to do is put some of this mixture in the batter bowl for Chris and myself because we are not going to eat it with the crescent rolls. So I'm just gonna scoop out a couple big scoops of it. And if that wasn't enough for us, whatever's left of this or vice versa, I'll come back to it. And the reason I put it in the batter bowl is because I will warm that up in the microwave for us, for us to put on our folio um, little tostados that we're gonna have. All right, so now we get to assemble the ring. Let me get some of this out of the way. And I am going to use the large white stone with handles. And I do have one of my cooling racks because the crescent rolls are gonna kind of lay, I hope y'all can see this. I'm trying to, I'm having trouble seeing because of the comments, but I don't wanna swipe them out of the way. Hey, Jennifer. Um, so now the crescent rolls can kind of lay over the edge. I have not gotten the crescent rolls out of the refrigerator yet because that is something very important. Don't let them get to room temperature or they become a gooey mess and really hard to separate. So let me grab those out of the refrigerator. I do have my um, oven preheating to three, or it's already preheated actually, to 375. I hope I bought the right crescent rolls. You want the classic crescent rolls, not the crescent roll sheet. Yes, I bought the right thing. Let me get some water real quick. Did everybody enjoy the beautiful weather today? Yesterday here, it rained, but today it's beautiful. I have my back door open and the birds have been singing all day and yeah, it has been great. Okay, so, oh, I just dropped that on the floor. You're going to basically make a ring. Some people, when they assemble their ring, will do 12, three, six, and nine, and then fill in in between. I, again, am not super fancy with this, so I just kind of put them on here. Put the wide end, you know, this fat end, put that more towards the middle. You need that in the middle because that's where your filling is going to go. And just in case any of you are wondering, I did wash my hands before I got started, but I also haven't been anywhere today. I've been with my family for days and days and days. So we're good, but I did wash my hands before we got started. So we're just going to kind of overlap these. And it should be that one package is gonna fill half of your stone. Now a little secret, you don't have to do this on a round stone. Sometimes I do it on the large bar pan, and so then it's kind of an oval instead of a circle because I just kind of make it go around. Um, so whatever stone you have, it'll work. If you don't want this big of a ring, half the recipe, and only do half the amount of crescent rolls and just do a smaller ring. Hey Carrie, hey Sharon. I'm trying to lean up and see the comments or see who's joining, but sometimes it's hard. All right, so we're just gonna continue with our little crescent roll triangles. Thank you guys for joining me. I am gonna try to go Facebook Live a little more often, give y'all um, an insight into what we are having for dinner during this time. Um, contrary to popular belief, even though I'm a Pampered Chef consultant and have been for 14 years, I don't ever cook as much as I have cooked in the last two and a half weeks. I'm just going to tell you. Oh, look, we're going to have a couple extra, so we're going to have to fill in. My estimate wasn't exactly right, but that's okay. We'll just put this little guy right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. I am pampered, not perfect. All right, now what we're going to do, I'm going to get the baker's roller. This is the little baker's roller. And I'm just going to kind of press down to kind of seal the crescent rolls again this doesn't have to be perfect if you don't have the baker's roller or you don't have a rolling pin you could also just kind of press it down 
with your fingers. You just kind of want to seal it so that the filling doesn't leak all in between it, kind of make it a little more uniform or whatever. All right, so there we go. Don't fall, don't fall. All right, and then we are going to use, if you watched yesterday when I was making banana bread, I used the large scoop yesterday. We're using it again today. Hey, Stephanie, hey, Kimberly. Um, we're using it again today to put our filling in. Okay, so let me just show you. All we are going to do, and you don't have to be perfect with your scoops. You're just gonna go in, this is the three tablespoon scoop. So it's the largest scoop. And you're just gonna go around and put your filling on top of the wider part of the crescent rolls. Wish y'all could smell the filling. We need smell vision on Facebook Live because it really, really smells good. And I'm making these scoops pretty big. I'll also probably go back in and fill in a little more. Again, if you don't need quite, a, quite this big of a ring, half the recipe. Um, I did, my chicken was, I should have paid attention to the packages. I would say this was probably about two and a half pounds worth of chicken, but that's just because I wanted this to be super full. Hey, John Allen, you wanna come tell everybody hello? I was gonna have him help me make the ring, but then he was upstairs. You can come say hi. Hello. That's about as much as we're gonna get, I guess. Probably. Um, okay, so we still have some filling. I'm gonna do a little bit more and then I'll put the rest in the bowl for Chris and me. That's probably pretty good. So let me rinse my hands off. Okay, so I used a good bit of the filling. I still have a little bit left, so I'm just gonna add that to the batter bowl for hours. Um, because what I'm going to do, this is all, the chicken obviously was already cooked. So I will then just microwave this to heat it all the way through and put on our foliar wraps. And I'll show you those in a minute when I start the guacamole. Hope everybody is having a good night. Give me some thumbs up if you are enjoying this video and want me to do some more of my dinners um, over the next few days or whatever. If this is helpful for you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Give me a thumbs up. Who else is joining? Hey, Susan Powers. Hey, Gina. Hey, Leanne. Hey, Kai. Kai. I was supposed to be down your way over spring break and again in June. And I don't know if that's gonna happen. <sighs> okay, back to our ring and happy thoughts. Um, so all you're going to do to finish the ring is take the little triangles and fold them over. Hey, Jacqueline. So you're just gonna fold them over, nothing magical about it. And I'm just kind of tucking it to the crescent roll down below, just so it kind of sticks. And yes, there will be gaps in between, and that's what you're supposed to have. It does not have to cover it all. There will be gaps, but as the crescent rolls cook, it'll fill part of those gaps, but then there'll still be some, and that's okay. That's, that's how the, the um, ring is supposed to look. Now, if you were following the recipe, what we would have done is pressed each one of these the bottom side, hey Debbie, the bottom side down into the crushed tortilla chips. And when it cooks, it just gets golden and those chips give it some texture. Um, again, my kids don't care about that, so we didn't do that step. All right, so here's what your ring looks like before you cook it. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 375 for between 20 and 30 minutes. I'm gonna start with 20 minutes. I'll check it um, if it needs longer. And you can just tell based on the um, crescent rolls, that's all you're really doing is cooking the crescent rolls. The meat is already cooked. Um, while the crescent rolls are cooking, it will heat all of it through. It'll melt that cheese. Um, when you're done, you can always add more cheese on top if you wanted. My kids don't care about having any lettuce, but if you're serving this, um, you know, maybe to some company, not right now because we're social distancing, but once we get back to normal life and you wanna have company over, cause we all are going to want to have friends over when it's safe, um, you could put some lettuce in the middle and 
a cute little bowl with salsa or guacamole or sour cream or whatever you wanted. So let me put this in the oven and we're gonna make homemade guacamole if y'all wanna stay with me for that. Let me get some of this out of the way because I don't need it. Okay, so for our homemade guacamole, set that out of the way, we are going to use three, maybe four, really ripe avocados. Now, Part of why I'm making guacamole is because I had made salsa, that stuff all over the counter. I had made salsa the other day and we haven't eaten all of it and I don't want it to go to waste. And I always use my fresh salsa when I make guacamole, I combine them. And I also, um, Chris and I tonight will have some guacamole instead of the cheese dip and the folio wraps that I'm talking about, which I need to show them to y'all in a minute. I get them at um, Publix and then the Parmesan flavor ones you can get at Costco. We can use the folio wraps as cheese. I mean, not as cheese, they are cheese, as chips for our guacamole. So let me grab our salsa. Let me grab our folio wraps. And if y'all are just hopping on, we are making a classic Pampered Chef recipe, um, the chicken enchilada ring. And that just went in the oven. So once we're done here, go back and watch um, from the beginning and you'll see how we made it. I also have put the link to the recipe up at the top. So if you wanna make this for your family later this week or this weekend, you'll have that recipe. For the kids, they will eat it regular. And for Chris and I, we will eat it on these folio wraps that I keep mentioning. So we'll eat it kind of like a tostado. I will warm this up in the microwave because it's the filling. And then these folio wraps, it's backwards. All this is, is a um, cheddar cheese wrap. And what I do, they're on, let me open it because I'm gonna have to make them anyway. There are four to a pack. Of course, since I'm Facebook Live, I won't be able to open it. I hope y'all are having a good evening. What time is it? Six o'clock, so dinner should be ready about 6.30. Okay, so there's four to a pack, and each one is on its own little piece of parchment paper. So what I do, I microwave, microwave these a minute and 25 seconds. That has come with trial and error. Hey, Patrice! It's come with trial and error for how long my microwave takes. Let me go ahead and microwave one, because then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so I do usually one whole pack when we're doing tacos or um, this chicken enchilada ring because Chris and I will each use one as our tostado and then the other one, once it's um, warmed up, we'll break it up and it becomes our chips. I do sometimes, if I know ahead of time, we're gonna go to a Mexican restaurant to eat out. Not right now because we're social distancing and we're not going to restaurants because they're not open. But if I am going and I know that, I'll make ahead of time and put them in a little Ziploc bag so that I can still have cheese dip and salsa at the restaurant. Okay, what we are also doing, and I feel like I'm a squirrel because I'm always a squirrel all over the place. We're now gonna make guacamole because I already had some fresh salsa I had made yesterday. We aren't gonna end up eating all of this, so I wanted to incorporate it into my fresh guacamole. And I'll show you how easy it is to make fresh guacamole. So first of all, you do want to use pretty ripe avocados. These could even stand to be a little more ripe, but I think they're going to be fine. I typically will do um, three to four avocados. And all I do, this might not be the best knife action, but to get the pit out, I just stab it with my, fork, my knife. And to um, cut it, I just go in a circle. This one's not as ripe. I think it'll be fine. Look how pretty. And we'll get that out in just a second. Where's my other one? Here it is. Oh! Okay, so. Oh, that one's really good because look how little the seed is. That means more avocado. They all 
all need to be like that. All right, let me show you the tool I use all the time to um, get the avocado out of the skin. We used to sell an avocado peeler. We don't sell it anymore. But I use, um, one of them is actually in the dishwasher because I used it yesterday. I sometimes use the batter spreader, which is just smaller than this. But this is the scoop and spread that some of you just ordered because it um, supports Feeding America. So this will work as well. And just use this harder end and you just go around the edge and look how it lifts your avocado out. And then just put it in the bowl. If you were slicing your avocado to eat, it's got a serrated side. So you can just go down here, slice and slice again. And this is, that's what I do when I'm trying to put it on my salad. I don't know if y'all can see that. And then I still use the stiffer end and scoop it out so you've got little pieces. So very multifunctioning tool. This is also a great tool for making a peanut butter and jelly. Hey, uh, Janelle, do you wanna get my little cheese thing out of the microwave for me? Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna put all of these in here. That one's the one that's not quite as right. And you can just set it right here. Oh, and this one that had the little baby pit is not as ripe either, but it should still work. I always buy some that are fairly ripe and then these. This is definitely not ready to eat. I buy a couple that um, are not as ripe so that the last extra days I can eat them later on. All right, so there's our avocado. Of course, we need fresh garlic because anything that gets made by me has fresh garlic in it, with the exception of my cookies and brownies. Mm -hmm. I do not put garlic in cookies and brownies because that would be gross. Now, there is garlic already in the salsa, but because we're adding the avocados to it, I need a little bit more garlic. We'll do one more clove. And then I'll just put the garlic press in the dishwasher when we're done. Okay, let me show you the folio wrap. So now this is what it looks like cooked. And it just peels off the little parchment paper. If you're using this as chips, this one will be my one for chips. It just breaks up really easy like chips. Hey, Jenna, can you put that back in the refrigerator for me? Thank you. So that will be one of the ones that we will use for chips with this guacamole. Hey, John Mark. Hey, Jessica. Um, type in the comments what you guys are having for dinner. Or if you don't know what you're having. Do not take that mixture. Your enchilada rings in the oven. Leave it alone. Okay. Another tool that I used yesterday when I made the banana bread. If y'all missed that, go back to my... Um, timeline and you'll see it but I'm going to use the mix and chunk to break up my avocados before I add in my salsa and so love this because you can just go in here smash your avocados to whatever desire you want them smashed you want them dead oh, I don't want them dead and then I need to get a spoon or some sort of scraper I obviously should have moved my tool turnabout over here, but that's okay. So here's my fresh salsa. Um, this is just fresh cilantro, one seeded jalapeno, a small yellow onion, and three vine ripe tomatoes, about three, no, I don't need it, John I'm good now, thank you though. Three to four garlic cloves, a little salt, a little lime juice, and a little chili lime rub. That is how I made it in the manual processor, took the blade out, stored it with the lid. All right, so we are gonna add a few scoops of the salsa to my avocados. Probably gonna add one more scoop. And we're gonna do some salt. Now, with guacamole, salt is really key. You, you need a decent amount of salt um, just because it gives the avocados good flavor. I'm using pink Himalayan sea salt, which is really, really healthy. I 
think I'm going to put a little more salsa. Oh, I wish we had smell vision. Y'all, this smells so good. We're going to do a little chili lime rub. Even though the salsa has it, again, we added, um, I almost called them jalapenos. We added avocados, so we need to add more flavor. A lot of times if you make homemade guacamole, you may think, oh, it doesn't taste very good, and it's because you don't season it enough. All right, so this is my homemade guacamole. How easy is that? Ooh, honey, garlic, chicken, and artichoke. That sounds really good. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Christy. Yeah, that sounds really good. Breakfast for dinner. We had that, I think it was last week, and my kids have already asked again, so we'll probably be having that in another couple days. Let me grab one of my little pieces of chip and we're gonna taste this real quick. Okay, so these are good and crisp. Like so crisp that it just broke. Pretty good, but it needs more salt. It actually needs some lime. Hang on, I don't have a lime, but what I do have When I buy my limes, I buy them in a bag and I never use all of them before they start going bad. So what I do, I use our little herb freezing trays and I squeeze the limes and freeze them and keep them just in a little Ziploc bag in my freezer. So now what I'm gonna do is thaw this and then that'll add lime juice here. So hold on. We will just thaw that for a second and then that'll get some lime juice in here. Hey, Rachel. you guys have found some entertainment and seen how easy this is to make our enchilada ring has about eight more minutes what I will do when it's done I'll take a picture of it and post it in the comments of this video hey Becky um, feel free to share this video in case you have friends that are looking for dinner ideas and if I've used any products that you think you could use in your kitchen private message me and I will send you the link to my Feeding America fundraiser. If you want lots of products that you saw me using, then think about hosting a virtual party of your own and let me help you get it for free. This month you have the opportunity to earn an extra $100 in free product for having a party, plus get some 50% off items and a 60% off item. So um, lots of great reasons to host. Let me grab our lime juice. Okay, so now we have fresh frozen lime juice that we will add to our guacamole. Let me stir that up. And let's take another little taste, or big taste, I should say. Mmm. That's what it needed. A little salt, little lime juice. There's our homemade guacamole. Um, the folio wrap, I'll do another one for me and Chris to put our um, chicken enchilada topping on. The boys' ring has six more minutes in the oven, so dinner will be on the table in about 10 minutes. We will have a little fresh salsa, a little fresh guacamole, the enchilada ring, and that's dinner. So I hope this has been helpful. You need a blade for your chopper. Mine is missing. Reagan, I will send you the link to my fundraiser because the um, replacement parts count towards the fundraiser as well. So I will send that to you when I get off this live. Um, if you have any trouble ordering, just let me know. When any of y'all, if you do order, whether it's on my fundraiser, you have your own party, any of that, all orders ship direct to each of you. There is no more shipping to the host. The host um, sort the orders and then deliver. So that is what is so, so great is it comes really quick. Although I will say right now, shipping's a little bit slower. I think we all know why, um, but it does come direct to you. So Gina, it is going to be really, really good. So if you have enjoyed this um, preparation of our dinner and want me to do some more Facebook lives, just do 
hashtag more and that way um, if I get enough people that want to see me cooking dinner more often I will definitely come live and share with you what we are having for dinner while we are social distancing and while I am cooking almost every single night for my boys my daughter is still at Auburn she um, has an apartment over there and works at a barn so the horses still have to be fed so she has stayed over there to help to make sure that the horses are taken care of but um, the boys and I and my husband of course he's a boy are here okay if you guys have questions let me know if there are things you need to order send me a private message and say I need to order and I will send you a link to my Feeding America fundraiser I am donating all of my commission from that plus Pampered Chef is doubling the percentage that they donate from the sales every product in the catalog counts towards it um, feel free to share this video with all your friends and if you have questions let me know if you need anything let me know if I have brightened your day um, give me a smiley face in the comments and also if you want to see more recipes say hashtag more y'all have a wonderful wonderful Wednesday evening I hope the rest of your week is great and I appreciate each and every one of you for joining me tonight and also for all the support you guys have always given my business over the last 14 years. Stay safe, stay healthy. I love you guys. Bye. Ooh.